We're driving 30 miles east of Flagstaff, Arizona, in what feels like the middle of nowhere. Blink and you will drive right past the abandoned town of Two Guns. Two Guns was originally a lonely trading post in the 1800s before becoming a popular stop on Route 66 that once included a restaurant, a gas station, a gift shop, a zoo, and overnight accommodations. Of course, the jewel in Two Guns, uh, holster was the Apache Death Cave. Well, we've arrived at the Apache Death Cave. TripAdvisor rates it among their top 10 death caves to visit in Arizona. If you type in Death Cave in Google Maps, it goes, oh, do you mean the Apache Death Cave right here? And takes you right to it. So the owner of this rest stop slash tourist trap constructed stone ruins around this cave and used the cave's Native American history as a way to entice in and then spook vacationers, calling it the Mystery Cave. But was this cave really haunted by vengeful Native American spirits or by something more culturally insidious? To try and answer that, we need to look at the history of the settlement. In 1878, a group of Apaches raided a Navajo camp for their food and supplies. As a note, in 2018, using the terms Apache and Navajo is too simplistic. For example, many Navajo prefer the term Diné, and I know someone in the comments will parse this out better than I. So during this raid, every man, woman, and child at the camp were killed, save for three girls taken prisoner. Understandably, Navajo leaders were not happy about this incident, so in order to avenge the raid, they sent out 25 men to find the Apache offenders. The Apache group evaded the Navajo until the scouts discovered a pocket of warm air and voices coming from a hole in the ground. It was then they discovered the Apache were hiding horses, campfires, and all in a large underground cavern. Finding the entrance in a ravine, the Navajo lit a fire at the mouth of the cave, trapping the raiders inside. When the Apache realized that smoke was blowing into their hideout and a fire rapidly approaching, they slit the throats of their horses, tried to douse the flames with the blood, and used the horse corpses to barricade the entrance. Hmm. This part may just be legend, but apparently one Apache man was able to slip out of the cave to ask for mercy. But just as it seemed like an agreement could be made, the Navajo asked about the three kidnapped girls. When the Apache man hesitated, well, it was understood they were SOL. The girls were dead, and so were the Apache raiders. The furious Navajo scouts fired shots into the cave and stoked the fire. When all was silent and the fire died down, the Navajo broke down the barbecued horse wall and discovered that 42 Apache had suffocated in the cave. After this, the Apache would no longer go near the cave, and when white settlers entered the picture, legend says they ignored Native American warnings that the area was cursed. Cut to the early 1920s, when Earl and Louise Cundiff acquired 320 acres in the area. They developed this into the Route 66 stop for food and gas. This investment is going really well for them when Harry Indian Miller, yes really, enters the picture, convincing them to lease him some land for 10 years. Miller is a savvy but unscrupulous businessman who claimed to be a full-blooded Apache chief named Chief Crazy Thunder, which he absolutely was not. He's full-blooded Apache like Carl Tanzler is a count, that is to say, not. Miller renamed the area Two Guns and capitalized on the haunted history of this mystery cave. I mean, what better for a business than a Native American curse? Miller strung up some lights in the cave, opened a soda stand, and gathered up the remaining bones of the Apache to be sold as souvenirs. It was around this time that the Apache Death Cave curse supposedly really kicked into high gear. First, a drifter stole a large amount of merchandise from the Two Guns trading post, causing Miller to fall into a financial hole. When Miller went to renegotiate the terms of his lease with Earl Cundiff, the existing tension between the two men erupted into an argument where Miller ended up shooting and killing Cundiff. For some reason, Miller was acquitted, but his luck didn't turn. In the years that followed, Miller was mauled by a mountain lion, a lynx, and a gila monster, all from his own zoo, was in and out of court for a number of legal woes, a fire destroyed the trading post, and unable to best Louise Cundiff over control of the land, 
Miller was forced to vacate two guns. Two guns would be sold, leased, abandoned, and revitalized multiple times in the subsequent decades, the most success coming to Ben Dreher, who acquired the property in 1960. All seemed to go well and curseless for Dreher until 1971, when another fire destroyed the town. It's been abandoned ever since. But why do places like Two Guns or the Apache Death Cave capture the American imagination? With a strange mix of guilt, obsession, and avoidance, we are preoccupied with Indian burial ground curses. This seems to be this foundational American belief that where there is an Indian, there be curses, and it's so ubiquitous that the Indian burial ground trope has practically become a parody of itself. I mean, really, when's the last time you were shocked when it was revealed that a haunted house could trace its bleeding walls and shadow people to the Native Americans they claim are buried under the garage? Jokes aside, this morbid fascination is actually a problem. Look, I don't want to be the white lady co-opting the plight of indigenous people. I can actually say this stuff because I am 119th Cherokee. My spirit animal is the unicorn. But it's hard to ignore that where these Indian burial ground myths are concerned, some pretty harmful stereotypes are at play. Native Americans become innately violent, mystical others intent upon haunting all the white people until they get off their land. Colin Dickey, a good friend who wrote Ghostland, an American history of haunted places, said this, white people have chosen to estrange themselves from the very land itself rather than face up to the past. Which is why places like Two Guns, the Apache Death Cave, and Native American burial grounds in general are so complicated to unpack. Colin again, facing these ghosts and expelling them in many of these horror stories becomes a means of refighting the Indian wars of past centuries. I hope you uh, enjoyed this trip to the Death Cave. There are no more bones in the cave, to be clear, most probably sold by that Miller guy, but it's still a really dangerous climb down there, so do not follow my example, like, at all. I do enjoy doing videos on location like this, so tell us in the comments where you'd like us to go next, and maybe, just maybe, we'll make it happen. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Pretty dirty. Pretty rudy. Careful bangs. <laughs>